looking at the guides from legends like Fallen, Shocks, Soon Device over on Boomio, you can learn a lot from these top pros, how they think about the game, how they approach the game, the mechanics and dynamics of how they play in a match from their role. But something that actually a lot of pros don't understand and do not execute correctly is something very simple, which is purely a metagame concept, which is how you save a weapon in terms of the economic impact it will have on your team's next round versus saving for this round. And so in general, it's actually a common misunderstanding or misperception that people will assign high in-game understanding to players who have high in-game skill level or technique or ability with the weapons to get kills. People will think, right, well, he's very good at killing people. He must have a fantastic mind for the game. He must know exactly what to do, what the most efficient plays are. Whereas that really is very little correlation between that. Many pro players are just skilled players. That's what they are. Their understanding of the game is impacted, yeah, by who they play with, maybe a good in-game leader, or the style of the team they play in, or the, the routine that they get into as a team, and what each team does as a flowchart from one thing to another. But a problem a lot of pro players face is that they will think only in the moment. And so when they're thinking in the moment, that doesn't enable them to make macro decisions, which can have an impact on future rounds and weigh up the odds of what they just did as a play versus what the outcome is likely to be. And think in that sense, because that requires thinking about the past and what you've just done, and then weighing up what your objectives are and what you have to do next and what is the best course of action. And instead, they're just stuck in the middle and they think in that one second about what they want to do and they don't always think what they should do. And so hence you see top pro players forced by in very ill-advised moments when they don't need to. You see pro players take duels when they have time on their side. They can win just by the clock running out or the bomb timer is on their side. If they waste more time, they make a person juke an angle or something. They can win without even having to kill him. Instead, they go for a duel. They go for an aggressive push. They try to end it with just a kill where sometimes that's not always the most efficient play to make. And so in this area of saving a weapon, that sounds like such a simple concept. And everyone will think, well, I, I understand how you save a, a, a weapon. And if I got most pros and I asked them in general, what are you going for when you save your weapons on this round where two or three of you are alive or one of you is alive, but he's in a 1v2 and it's just going to be or 1v3 and he's got low health. It's unlikely he can win the round. If I asked most of them, yeah, they could write me out on a test. The basic answer that would roughly be correct and in line with the general principle of what they're trying to do. But when you actually look at what pro players do in professional matches and throughout the history of Counter-Strike. This goes back in a 1.6. They used to do it for many, many years there. And I used to, it used to be a pet peeve of mine then. I used to get so tilted watching it on HL TV. So here is the core concept when you come to save guns. And I'm talking about a scenario in which you have like two to three players still alive. Usually it's when you're CTs and the, the, the terrorists have taken over a bomb site successfully. They've killed two or three of your teammates there. They've got four or five players. And just from the fact of where they get the bomb down and how they've got you pushed off, it just seems in that scenario like your chances of winning the round aren't that high. Maybe your best players aren't alive or they have low health or you just think there's no way we're going to get back in when they have utility. We don't have any. In these scenarios, sometimes you go to save the weapons, right? And what you're trying to do here, here's the core concept. When you save the weapons in this kind of a premise, you are doing two two things at the same time. One, you are giving up any chance to win the current round. Now, the reason why you are winning the, the giving up the the chance to win the current round, and this is a core concept because the second concept is not separate. It is contingent on the first. You're giving it up because it, by saving two or three guns, you will likely be able to buy next round enough weapons for everyone on your team to have a buy round. Now, you might not have a full buy round. You might not have all the utility, but you'll have enough for each member of your team to have five guns. And therefore, what you're essentially weighing up in this kind of a scenario is that... You're willing to lose this round 100%, certainly by saving, in order that next round, rather than having to save or have only half your team have weapons, you're going to next round have full weapons again. And even if you aren't uh, uh, absolutely a 50-50 chance to win the next round, maybe you have less utility than the opponent, you're, you're trying to weigh up the idea that your chances in the next round with full weapons are higher than your chances of winning whatever it might be, a 2v4 now, a 3v5 now, on the round that you're giving up. 
And that's the core concept. So you're doing both things at once. So by giving up that round, you need to ensure that the next round occurs in line with that premise. So that by giving up the first round that maybe you had the 30% chance on, you get to a round where maybe you have a 45% chance. So this means the ultimate sin you can commit in this round is to give up the first round when maybe you had the 30%, the 25% chance to win. And then not manage to save the weapon through only your own fault so that next round you don't then have the 40 the 45 percent chance to win because you didn't save the gun you only saved one gun or both your guns died and actually you now go down to a, a scenario where you have no money anyway so you gave up a 30 percent chance let's say and now you have a much lower percent chance you have absolutely as a concept within the meta game fucked up the match at that point in time as a game theory principle you have lost entirely and really heavily thrown away potentially two rounds at this point in time so this is the problem most pro players when they save weapons in these scenarios especially if they do it early in a round it's not like they're going to go for it but then it just doesn't they don't get in quick enough or they don't catch someone off the first angle and then they give up it's when someone takes the site and they just decide immediately right gather up go to one site or go to another bury them out maybe to their spawn and we're just going to save the weapons in these scenarios what you will see pro players do even some of the best players in the world is they will unnecessarily peak corners or look for duels or actively engage in duels in scenarios where they don't have to we're either not showing will still keep the enemy having to check more corners and perhaps you can survive or showing will mean that you're going to have to have a duel in which one of you is going to die or just unnecessarily peaking when even if you were going to stay in the site and they would come in you could have made him not know where you are and you'd at least have the drop on him with the angle but instead by peeking out he sees where you are and then maybe you even peek out and both of you just take a straight up duel against each other now when you do that you risk your weapon which is at that point in time, your primary objective, you've already lost the round you're in, so your primary objective is to safely escort this weapon to the next round. By peaking, you're immediately risking losing that and essentially losing your and, and failing your one objective that you have left that you can play at. In many of these situations, it is rare that you actually winning even that first duel and killing the opponent will actually actively hurt in any significant way the economy of the other team. So people might naively think, pro players, right, well, if I can get the jump on him and I can kill him, right, I've taken a gun from them, you know, that's evening up the economy. Not really, because especially on these CT examples, the terrorist economy doesn't need to be as strong. It's already strong. They're going to get a bomb explosion. They've already gotten kills. They might have won more, one or more rounds. They also have cheaper weapons weapons the AK is much cheaper than the M4 so in this scenario getting just one kill off someone while risking your weapon often won't be worth the risk meanwhile if you lose your weapon he, remember he can afford to lose his if you lose yours you massively cripple your chances for the next round Yet your chances for the next round were the reason why you made the decision to give up your chances for this round that's the core principle that the pro isn't understanding when he peaks in this kind of a sense he's actively risking only his own economy in many senses there the risk to reward ratio is skewed massively in the wrong way there's too much risk and too little reward by peaking he also potentially wastes the current round which was given up in order to save for the next so even saving on that round was now a waste forget the fact he doesn't have a gun for the next round then you've got to consider as i said before if you'd had those two or three players alive and instead of saving you'd gone for the round you might have still had a chance to win the round you might have had a 25 percent 30 percent chance of winning the round which now you've given up so in this situation this player peaking and not saving saving his weapon safely he should be calculating in his mind when he does this if he could pause time right i'm about to peak and take a duel now so in this scenario was it worth me giving up a 3v5 to save these three guns if I die, and that means we only take two guns into the next round, if we take two guns in the next round, and let's say they drop and buy guns for themselves, and one guy doesn't have a gun, so now we have four guns against five of the opponent, is a 4v5 in terms of overall guns, not players, uh, is there a better chance of us winning that round than of us actually winning the 25 or 30% chance 3v5 retake or 2v4 retake? Because if that chance is lower, then he should say, oh, wait, right, I'll unpause time now and I won't do it because that makes no sense. Like in the long run, I'm going to lose out too much doing that. And that principle doesn't make sense economically or in terms of efficiency within the game. Players don't do that, though. That's one of the big problems. 
Now, as a general principle, because of the fact that so many pro players don't save correctly, I'm actually, as a general principle within the game, as a meta game concept, not a big fan of saving in this particular way. I think it risks too much because it, it essentially gives up a round as if you can definitely get that 40% next round. Whereas actually, even when you save correctly, oftentimes, if you do it early, enemies can hunt you down. If they really do weigh up themselves, oh, these two AKs are worth chasing down this orb that they're saving somewhere, then they can take that gun away from you. And even though you made the correct decision, you might have even saved safely actually you can have the weapon taken from you anyway now you get a, a, a low chance for the next round anyway whereas at least maybe you had a 30 or 25 percent chance for this round that you didn't take so i also feel like it puts players in a mentality where when they do it i know in the latter days of 1.6 this was a big problem in my opinion they get into the mentality that as soon as those first couple of kills are given up they're looking to save and that's where you can always see the AWPers that aren't elite level AWPers. Because as soon as that first or second teammate dies in his sight, he's looking to save already. He's looking, oh, uh, uh, I should save my AWP. I've got to get my AWP out of here. The really world class AWPer thinks I'm still holding my angle. When these next two pe people peek me, I kill them. And now I've evened up the score. And now we're going to come back for the retake and I'm going to hold this area off. That's another problem I have. It puts in place what I consider a losing mentality in the player's mind, especially when they then don't correctly save or can't correctly save in that kind of a scenario. Then you've got to finally consider that I think it makes people overestimate the difficulty of winning rounds where you have at a disadvantage. Yes, if they've fully taken the site already, if they've planted already, if they've smoked the utility off already and you're absolutely crushed out, maybe it's not worth going for it. But that's only from a broad sense where I haven't given you any more information. Maybe you have two or three people and so you can at least peek onto, say, the Quad of Inferno. And in that scenario, you're probably only going to fight one or two people at most. So maybe there you can get an even duel, see if you get a kill, see if there's an opening, or you can hold up a second, don't save too early, see if someone will peek out aggressively. Maybe they'll think you're saving or come out for the guns. You can do a lot of things. And then once you get a, a kill or two yourself, you're upping your odds and now you can turn it into a winnable round. In the same way as they can enter the bomb site where you have two players with three players and kill you, you, can, you have a chance, if you can isolate the right two players, to kill them with two or three players. You never should think of it as the overall numbers of the fight. You're very rarely having a real five-man versus three-man fight. That's one of the concepts of Counter-Strike that people often don't understand. The entire teams very rarely ever fight in that particular sense. It's isolated duels or 2v3s, etc. that are taking place. Now, it is even more important to correctly save your weapon if you have the AWP. Because it's so expensive, its kill rewards are so little, that you need the AWP because to lose the AWP when you're saving it is a massive swing and cripples your chances to win the next round even more. If you have an AWP and a couple of guns, now you can do even more in the next round because the AWP obviously one bullet stopper. So as a result, you kill a couple of people in two shots and suddenly that can even a whole game up. That's also one of the reasons, by the way, why in general as a secondary concept, I don't generally like non-star players in teams to be the ones who use the AWP and are the primary AWPers because I feel like that also promotes not only them, but their team to save the AWP more. In scenarios, if they'd had a rifle, they would have gone for it and could have won and therefore give up more rounds but in exchange for an AWPer who's not a star AWPer and who doesn't do incredible damage to the opponents, having an AWP more often, and therefore that is actually not even necessarily a higher chance than if they'd have gone for the, the 2v4, the 2v3 retake in a particular scenario. This is a problem that has tilted me for many years. Part of the problem is player habits are that they want, if they're very skilled players, they want to initiate duels. They want to steal a kill. And as a result, these elements override what would be more logical macro thinking about the larger scale elements of the game. It's even worse. The thing that tilts me the most is when they do save correctly, they're saving in a part of the map where the opponent's not going to get to them. And there's like two seconds left, like the bomb's just gone off or there's a second left on the clock. And they peek out at the last second thinking they're going to be cheeky. And then they die and they don't get and they don't kill the opponent for his gun and they lose their own gun. Because in that scenario, that is the worst possible way you could have played that save round to do that in that setting where you could have saved definitely and survived in hidden. Now, part of the reason why they do it to consider the psychology is because if they get away with it, if they peek out a second and they do kill the opponent and they don't die and the bomb went off and the opponent died, they feel like, haha, in this setting, like I've gotten away with something. I've stolen something a little bit extra. How cheeky that is. Maybe I'll fuck with the opponent a bit. That's really not worth it though on a larger scale for your objective, which is that you've given up a round in order to try and make your chances to win the next round higher than they would be otherwise. You have now risked those chances being lower. Now, I will say there are some other caveats where it's different. Like, it's different if someone is a world-class all If Kenny S is trying to save his weapon and he goes over to another bomb site, 
Now, sometimes, yeah, he shouldn't just hide behind a box and not peek at all. Maybe he can take an angle where for them to peek into his sight, they have to literally move out into his orb across there. And he's such a good player. He actually will kill the first couple if they chase him. And therefore, he can actually put them off chasing him when he's saving the weapon. And he can do damage to the opponent. And there's a lower chance that he loses his weapon. In that scenario, yes, you notice it has to be Kenny S there. It's a pretty extreme circumstance. Likewise, another extreme circumstance is, yes, we don't blame players who don't save properly when the enemy's advancing on their position. When two or three enemies are overrunning the site that you're hiding in and it's almost certain they're gonna find you and that they might even kill you in this setting and maybe you're in a situation where you can't take a straight up fight where you both kind of see each other at the same time you have to try and catch him in the back or in the side yes that's different the problem is, as a general concept, I feel like saving gets taken too far as it is. It should be, same with four spies. Four spies and saving are two opposite ends of the equation, but they should both exist, but they should be used, weighed up with the risk and reward to make the game more likely that you can win the match, obviously. People go overboard and force spying, but they go overboard and saving too. I mean, a classic example is, I remember a game, it was at the 2009 World Cyber Games, and it was in, I believe, the quarterfinals, when Finland's Power Gaming, which was Natu, and it was Ruit, it was Conte, and it was a bunch of these very good players, played against Again, which were the Poles, and they had Poles went on to win that year, and it was a three-map series, and in the third map, which was on Inferno, the Finnish team won the first half, something really good, it was something like 12-3. Like, they had a fantastic first half, or 11-4, and then in the second half, they lost, I think, 13-2, and lost the game 16-14 or 16-13, something along those lines, because so many CT rounds, they would just save their weapon. And if they were in a 2v4 or 2v3 or a 3v5, they would just save immediately. They often lost the guns in this way, and they just gave up too many rounds this way. They never went for any of these 30% chances where even a couple of them won, could have turned the whole match and won them the entire match. Now, they also had an AWPer who wasn't a superstar, but was one of the better players called T-Hop, and he likewise always wanted the AWP save for himself. So you can see that it's a tricky situation to be in anyway. But amazingly... It's, it, I think this should be a slogan. You know the slogan, slogan, pros don't fake? By the way, pros fake all the fucking time. But I get the slaying. In general, there are a lot of amazing pros know when to pull it off. Well, guess what? Pros don't save. And they definitely don't save properly. Yo, this is Alu from Face Clan. You've got uh, pretty big balls to watch Torian's YouTube video. Hello, guys. This is Gabriel Fallen from Team SK Gaming.